Have you ever needed a keypad with only three buttons? I sure didn't, but let's take a look at it. So this is the Ivy keypad, which came in this nice, interestingly shaped cardboard box that is padded to keep your keypad safe. And if we lift off the keypad, we got an interesting exclamation mark. <laughs> when you buy the keypad, you're also going to get a set of accessories that come in a little bag. Those accessories being a sticker and three sets of blue, black, and white keycaps. All of which are in the DSA profile, which is a lower profile. Onto the keypad itself, it is made from a block of brass, giving it a very substantial weight, which is an attracting feature of it. And as you can tell, it comes with three holy pandas. The keypad's input is a USB-C input, and the bottom cover is made of rubber, with two hex screws holding everything together. During purchase, you can choose the keypad to be soldered or unsoldered. I chose mine to be unsoldered so I can show you guys the insides of it. All we gotta do is take off the two screws holding it together and remember they are hex screws. Aside from the switches, the IV is made of three different parts starting off with the case which is made of brass and has thick walls attributing to its large and heavy weight. Mine is powder coated in white but you can get it in other colors. The rubber base plate has grooves around the edges to keep the screws off the table and comes in black or white. On the flip side you can find the side to bite as well as the designer. Onto the PCB, it's very nice, comes in white and is not hot swappable so prepare to solder. On the bottom you'll find the reset button to reprogram it and it is QMK configured and there's a little nice touch of a maple leaf near the USB-C port. The top plate is essentially an integrated one, so I'd recommend putting the switches in first and then the PCB so that the nipples can hang on to the PCB to keep it from sliding around when you solder. Something I like to do after soldering my keyboard together is fitting them with some foam. And for this foam, you're going to have to put it on the base plate if you want things to fit in easily. But after sound test, there was no noticeable difference with or without foam, so kudos on the design of this keypad. And now time for a sound test! Something I should note is that if you want to buy this keypad, it was part of a group buy, so currently it is no longer available. I'm still going to leave a link in the description of where I bought it in case it ever does come back around because this was actually the second run in which I bought it. To know if they're going to do another run of these, you'll have to follow them on social media or check out the subreddit for um, mechanical keyboards. Anyhow, I hope this has helped. Like and subscribe because that would help me get around the YouTube space a little bit better. And I'll see you guys next time.